This is a water bottle that fills itself. It's called the Fontis, and it's supposed to be able to pull water out of the air as you ride a bike, filling up over the course of an hour. Designer Christoph Redesart made the Fontis to address the lack of safe drinking water in many areas of the world. Fontis was fantastic from the start. Pure water of near endless supply. What if you had access to a solar panel that could power a mini water manufacturing plant whose sole source was the naturally existent moisture in the very air we breathe? So long as you had sunlight, you'd have pure drinking water of near endless supply. Fontis can give you that. It had $300,000 of backing, over 10 times what it said it needed. There was no way on earth that such a brilliant and well-funded idea could possibly go bankrupt. I mean, look, here it is working on a boat, on a bike, and even backpacking. And this was three years ago. must be super duper awesome by now. There's no way on earth that this brilliant idea could possibly go, oh, it's gone bankrupt. You know, if I were to give you about $40,000 and you would spend it on a solid gold hammer, a profoundly stupid material to make a hammer from, the thing is that at least now, a few years on, that solid gold hammer would still be worth about $40,000. However, if you invested that money in Fontus, it would now be worth about $8,000, losing about 20% of its value per year. If you're lucky, if you'd invested merely $100 in Fontus, you would now be looking at getting back zero. Oh, who could have seen it coming? Well, certainly not any of the plethora of people who were eager to support these people claiming that their miraculous bottle would just pull water from the air from this diddy little solar panel. The bottle's prototype doesn't filter out air pollution either, and that's something it'll need to do to truly provide access to clean water. Still, it's a starting point. A crowdfunding campaign is supposed to launch soon, and a future version might not even require a bike. Just set it down, and it'll start to fill up. And what have they achieved with this $300,000? Quite literally nothing. Of that $300,000, about $60,000 is left, meaning that about $240,000 was just wasted. And when I say wasted, I mean really wasted. If you'd have just taken that $240,000 out in $1 bills, it would have weighed about 240 kilograms, more than his own body weight in dollar bills. At least if he had to burn that to keep his house warm or something, he would have got something useful out of that quarter of a million dollars of money. But it all started so well on the deck of this million or so dollar power bow, which attracted some glorious comments. So, Ian writes, I know it was addressed in the last few minutes, but there is no way I drink water from a dehumidifier. And he's quite right. In fact, most dehumidifiers come with labels saying, don't drink the water from the dehumidifier. Any dehumidifier that I've seen is pretty filthy, and that's just the crap you can see. On a separate note, what's with the boat? It looks to be approximately a 40-foot power boat. I'm guessing, ballpark, that it's in the one to one and a half million dollar range and comes with a fridge. So why would the millionaire owner be scavenging dirty water from a dehumidifier? And he's got a point. And M.A. responds, with Fontus, you don't need plastic bottles. He might be an environmentally conscious powerboat owner. And Gary chimes in. There are desalination systems for boats that cost about a grand or so and run off 12 volts DC or 120 volts AC and basically use high pressure to push seawater through an osmosis membrane. But one typical unit I looked at can make about 10 gallons per hour and you don't have to run them all of the time. Sailboats run small rigs of solar panels. It's much more efficient to run an osmosis system than the idiotic dehumidifier approach so it works fine. And Gary continues, and the water is safe to drink, unlike the toxic stew you get from a dehumidifier. 
And just so you know what he's talking about, this is the sort of thing that they typically have on boats. So this will produce about 200 gallons of water per day, which is about a thousand litres, about a ton of water. It'll set you back about three, four thousand dollars, that sort of thing. But when you actually take a look at the specs, you start realizing this is why they have these sorts of things on boats. So first of all, it'll produce you know, a ton of water per day, well, three quarters of a ton. But it takes up a lot of power, it takes 1.9 kilowatts. That's about the sort of power you would need to run a kettle. Now, what you'll see later is Fontas, under ideal conditions, takes about 0.1 kilowatts and produces one liter of water per day. So about 20 Fontases would cost about $2,000, would take up a similar amount of power. So it, the cost is comparable, the power consumption is comparable, but 20 Fontases would only produce 20 liters of water per day under ideal conditions. So this thing produces between 10 and 20 times as much water for the, the same cost as Fontas. Plus, of course, the minor um, technical detail that it's safe to drink the water from one of these things. Not so sure I would trust it with Fontas. Now, there were folks like me and Dave from EEV Blogs who call this as bullshit from the first instance. Indeed, the creator of Fontas saw these videos and claimed that special materials or something was going to help him beat the laws of physics. Most of the statements are not accurate. The thermal core setup is vastly different than the oversimplified animation shown in our video. They serve only illustrative purposes. They don't show the exact technological details. Spoiler alert, Christoph, all the design in the world won't help you beat the laws of thermodynamics. That's kind of like claiming that something like this will give you unlimited power. And let's make no bones about it. Fontas is by no means an outlier here. There's zero mass water. There was water seer, which initially had the backing of Berkeley until obviously they saw my video and retracted that support. Disclaimer. Sutaja Center Collider projects are academic exercises executed with the goal of helping students gain experience with real world industry problems. The Sutaja Center, Berkeley Engineering and UC Regents do not necessarily claim to support the efficacy or claims made by any industrial partner of their projects. Under optimal conditions, a single water seer may collect as much as 37 litres of clean, fresh water every day. Hell, even MIT has gone into the business of reinventing the desiccant dehumidifier. I mean, ever since people found out that Luke Skywalker was basically a moisture farmer... You never consider moisture farming? People have been thinking, wow, wouldn't that be really cool if we could do that? Well, sure, so would laser swords and telekinesis and the such like. But the simple reality is the thermodynamics of water has been fairly well understood since people started running steam trains on this sort of thing. And there's not really been that much of a change in our knowledge of the thermodynamics of water since then. But it's kind of sad that every few years someone reinvents the wheel. Oh, uh, sorry, the desiccant dehumidifier and everyone dances around like they've just cured cancer or something. Technology having uses far beyond his family. His freshwater machine feeds off humidity in the air. It pulls in water particles through a vent and then basically forms a rain cloud inside the machine. So Hector Pino figured out how to make water from air with the touch of a button. Hector made a fortune as an engineer, but now works full-time on his freshwater system. But what would happen if we were not dependent on rivers or lakes to access water? If we could extract it from anywhere? If we could actually get it from the air? Fresh water captures the water particles in the air to condense them, just like a cloud in the sky captures and purifies water particles that are apt for consumption. This is something that I first heard about and asked myself, is that really a thing? And that's the sign of a good Unbox Therapy video. Now I'm no scientist, I know it's hard to believe, but there's something I do know about this machine right here. And that is the fact that it can make pure, 
filtered drinking water from the air. Extreme drought has focused on saving water, but a local team may have found a simple and cheap way to make water. A freshman here at the University of San Diego may have found the solution for California's drought, and it's as simple as creating water out of thin air. Ah, uh, yes. The 18-year-old has hidden an invention on campus that not only can win him some money, but it could ease California's water woes. He got the idea one day while looking at the condensation on the side of a glass. Wow, this water comes out of nowhere. Why can't we just reuse it? The way that our unit here works, our water from air unit is very simple. And the way we're going in South Africa, Africa, and the world for that matter, there's a billion more people than there is enough water. So the way we're going right now is that units like this are going to save the planet. So these units are literally making rain while the sun shines. It's as simple as that. It's Access to clean drinking water is one of our world's greatest challenges. Yet, there is an abundant supply all around us, in the air, as water vapor. Here at MIT, we've developed a novel device that can capture this resource. Now, moving forward, we need to further tailor this powder and engineer the device to improve performance. Our goal is to create a product for the millions of people that live in arid regions, have limited infrastructure, and lack access to clean drinking water. Poor women and children walk for hours every day to collect the water that they need to live and carry it back to their village along the same dangerous track, often with young children in tow. What if there was an inexpensive solution that would allow people to collect clean, safe water where they live, directly from the air around them? WaterSeer uses the environment around it to extract water from the atmosphere. Wind spins a helical turbine, direct air into a condensation chamber. Clean, safe, pure water can be extracted from the reservoir through a simple hose and pump. Because the sides of the underground chamber are always cooler than the air, WaterSeer is always collecting water, day and night, even without wind. And it's for reasons like this that I make these videos. It seems that this free water from air is such a seductive concept that it just makes people throw their brains away. I mean, really, does this guy think that no one ever looked at condensing water before and thought, ha, huh, why don't we make all of our water like that? He got the idea one day while looking at the condensation on the side of a glass. Wow, this water comes out of nowhere. Why can't we just reuse it? And the media is more than happy to put out these clickbait articles about this amazing new idea that's going to save the world. The Fontas prototype produces about 17 ounces of water an hour. That's great for cyclists. And God does it pull in the clicks. Hell, just this video about using an overpriced power whore dehumidifier to get really expensive water from the air has over 4 million hits and a 90 something percent approval rating. Yeah, the bullshit outnumbers the media calling it out 10 to 1. I mean, this video from MIT, the world's top university. The top university in the world is proudly reinventing something that's been around for decades. Access to clean drinking water is one of our world's greatest challenges. Yet, there is an abundant supply all around us, in the air, as water vapor. Oh, and boy, do I know the look of overfunded, underthought-out work. Trust me, I've seen enough of it in my time. Firstly, you seem to have forgotten to put a fan on your heatsink. And for some reason, it's all stuck on an optical bench. You know, a grotesquely expensive optical bench. Second hand, those things run a few thousand dollars. Also what? You can absorb water onto a desiccant and then condense it on a Peltier effect cooler. Hell, I did that in my kitchen with some zinc chloride I had lying around. The zinc chloride seems to pull out quite a lot of water from the air. This was 193 earlier today, and now it's about 10 grams heavier. Then condensed it in a perspex box, which cost about 20 bucks. Actually quite a lot of energy, but don't worry. This is all just powered by the, uh, the power of the sun, just like in the science paper. So let's see if we can zoom in on that and see if water actually condenses. 
So this is about 20 minutes of this Peltier device being run and I've zoomed right up so you can actually see what's going on. And you can just about see the drops of water forming on my Peltier cooler. Okay, so let's see what that looks like now, shall we? Let's just move the fun off a little and take a look at what we have. And what we have is water. Just look at all that water free from the air. I mean, all it took was free sunlight and uh, about 50 watts of power. Also what, you can save the starving people. Our goal is to create a product for the millions of people that live in arid regions, have limited infrastructure, and lack access to clean drinking water. Bullshit! Look, this is a news report of desiccant dehumidifiers from 2007. For anyone who doubted you could squeeze water from the hot, humid Florida air, here's your proof. There's the water. David Murphy says his company's found a way to pull more than a thousand gallons of water from thin air. FEMA has paid one million dollars for two units. Not a giant dehumidifier like some people might think. This is a very different technology using what we call hygroscopic media. But the secret lies with lithium chloride, an extremely salty solution that draws the water molecules from the air. The military has also shown interest because the machine promises to pull moisture from even the driest desert climates like Iraq, bypassing the logistical nightmare of transporting millions of tons of fresh drinking water. Wow, water from the air, even in the desert. <laughs> but when you start to think about it a little more, it really won't help. Desiccant dehumidifiers are nothing new. Indeed, here's a review of them from a guy working from the Department of Energy and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory going back to 1993. Now they're looking at it from dehumidifying the air for a, a various reasons, not actually harvesting that water, but the principle is exactly the same. Air dehumidification can be achieved by two methods, cooling down the air below the dew point and removing moisture by condensation, or sorption by a desiccant material. Desiccants in either solid or liquid form have a natural affinity for removing moisture. And if that was too complicated for you, if you just read the wiki article on atmospheric water generation or desiccant dehumidifiers, where, according to their numbers, where you can turn about one unit volume of gasoline into five of water. Making this one of the most expensive ways on the planet to create water. Our goal is to create a product for the millions of people that live in arid regions, have limited infrastructure, and lack access to clean drinking water. But if you think that's bad, I was recently at a water conference. Yeah, believe it or not, there are actually science conferences on subjects as simple as water. It kind of turns out people are mostly water, and so it's interesting for a whole host of other reasons. And what was at this conference? Free water from the air. And no, we're not talking about rain, which is the <laughs> more conventional way of getting free water magically from the air, from sunshine and fresh air. And they were laboring under the delusion that this wasn't a decades old idea of a desiccant dehumidifier. A desiccant dehumidifier that had already been optimized in industrial settings for reducing humidity, I might add. Sure, you could get water from it. It was just, it was an insanely expensive way of getting drinking water. About 500 times the price of tap water. Hell, in a lot of places, the opposite is actually true. Swamp coolers basically evaporate water to create cooling. And they're actually a very well-established technology. I mean, damn, I remember when I was a kid in Socorro, New Mexico. It's this really characteristic desert light, you know. I remember playing with my brother in the desert. You know, going looking for scorpions and all that sort of thing. Uh, where almost every house had a swamp cooler on it. Water, when it evaporates, creates a lot of cooling. And it's actually a much more efficient way of cooling than an air conditioner, assuming you've got the water to evaporate, that is. Plus, of course, if you're in a low humidity environment, increasing the humidity makes it more comfortable. In fact, this is another idea I've been kicking around as running a spoof Kickstarter on. 
We here at our Thunderfoot Concepts have invented a completely new method that can turn regular, nothing special tap water into cheap air conditioning for your house at one tenth of the cost of regular air conditioning. Now this is totally not a swamp cooler. Sure, it might look like one, but this has special materials in it. And most importantly, it's a different color. Indeed, our goal is no less than to provide cheap, cool air to the millions of people who live in resource-poor areas of the world and have limited infrastructure and no access to cheap, affordable, cool air. But we need your support to make this happen. And you can sign up and make this a reality at Indiegogo today. <laughs> uh, anyway, the last nail in the coffin for Fontus was them proving that their device worked. They sent it out for independent testing and they put it in a climate chamber at 100% humidity. Uh, this is like being in a sauna and their bottle managed to make about one liter of water in a day while sucking up the best part of 100 watts. I mean, really, let's just compare what Fontas claimed the device could already do back in 2014. This is from the Daily Mail. For with Christoph Retzar, Jane Dyson Award winner. Industrial design student Mr. Retzar said that the device can harvest half a litre of water in an hour under ideal climatic conditions. So that's about one litre in two hours. In temperatures of about 20 degrees Celsius and 50% humidity. Right, now let's take a look at what was actually delivered four years on. Not 20 degrees, but 35 degrees. And 100% humidity, not 50%. Basically, there's about three times more water in the air in the test chamber than what they claimed they used about three years ago. It runs off 100 watts, not the 10 or so that you would have gotten off its solar panel assuming there's sun about, of course, and it doesn't pull down one litre in two hours, but one litre in 20 hours. Or in other words, Fontas delivered less than 1% of the performance that they claimed the device could already deliver back in 2014. Hmm, maybe it would be best to stick to the desalination unit on the million dollar powerboat. So, how much are the Fontas investors getting back? Well, of the third or so million dollars that they got, do they reckon they've got about 20% left? Let's see what some of the investors are saying now, shall we? Well, Mr. Chan's not a happy bunny. You got over $340,000 from here. It's your responsibility to explain the reason why you now have no money to perform a small production for backers, but you don't. In the two years, I cannot see critical processes of the product. You just travel from somewhere to somewhere to do a test and meet someone. And now you tell me that you don't have enough money. Where has the money gone? Thus, I have questions about your integrity. And he's got a point. I mean, look, if I was doing this, the first thing that I would do is just get a climate control chamber and you can get them off eBay for a couple of thousand dollars, which if you've got a budget of a quarter of a million dollars is chump change. And then you could have done this test, which you've only just done years ago, which really does raise the question, what was the remaining quarter of a million dollars spent on? Yeah, these guys seem a little hopeful. I'm willing to fill out the German forms and pay the processing fee only if I get a 100% refund on my investment. That is what we are owed. What can be done, Fontas? And also, I also will be expecting a 100% refund as this is what I am owed. Hello, those who are not in the same country as you. How can I get the refund back? Nobody will fill up the forms and request a feed process for the refund. It's ridiculous. 1,152% of their goal raised, and that's still not enough. An American company filing for bankruptcy in Europe. <laughs> and there are some people who are really committed to the lie. As a backer, I fully understood the giant leap Fontas was taking in innovating newer condenser technology, how much time that would take to develop and test, as well as allow for it to come to market. There was a tremendous risk in backing this project. 
but there are benefits that research was able to provide in the long term. I am proud to have backed a science research project. It's unfortunate that the perp didn't make it, but thanks for letting us know. May this project live again someday. <laughs> Tommy Guns is not so happy, so we've got to pay to get our money back, fill out some court form documents in another language. Yep, got scammed. So wait, my initial investment is $250. They're quoting 20% investment return, which is $50. But first I have to pay $26 and send a legal document to Austria. Yeah, no, they can keep that extra $24 I would have received back in that case. You raised 11 times your goal and couldn't even get prototypes out to your supporters. If you are a legit startup, next time do your research before starting a campaign. And for those who are not familiar with it, this was a very glossy campaign, which had sort of three-dimensional models and, and prototypes, which were, it got backing from everywhere. It had slick production quality. Look, they even thought so far ahead that it was gonna have mineralization tablets. I mean, just look at all of this. You can see how people were taken in that this was actually a, a serious effort. Look, look at the places where Fontus will be effective. And they even have, have data on how much water it's going to generate. In reality, of course, you can probably divide these numbers by a hundred. Just look at all of this. Look, look, look. Indiegogo campaign, 2016. Ready, ready to ship in 2017. Design awards. And the Fontas team. So ends the Ballad of Fontas. And yes, I'm glad that I made so many videos on this. This promise of magical devices that will pull free water from the air comes up again and again and again across so many forums. So the next time you see this snake oil being pimped, and there will be many next times, remind them of what happened to Fontas. And if you're glad that at least one beast has been slain, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more sweet, juicy scientific justice. And if you really want to help this channel, you can do it directly through Patreon, and I'll leave the links below.